Uh, hi, everyone, and welcome to the first part of this lecture, uh, which will introduce a key concept in quantitative genetics, uh, that is the concept of heritability. So more precisely, we'll define heritability and genetic correlation, and we'll also give an examples about what is heritability used and useful for, uh, just to build a bit more our, our general understanding. So uh, heritability quantifies the degree to which um, inter-individual differences and inter-individual resemblance in the population are due to genetic factors. So this uh, concept, heritability, which is now a parameter, uh, can be approached through different angles. And I'll give you now two of uh, those angles. So the, the standard way of introducing heritability is to think about a trait. Um, here I used um, the notation Y for that trait just to denote uh, the trait itself and its value. So if we model that trait Y as the sum of two parts, the part that comes from genetic factors, which are noted G, and the part that comes from non-genetic factor, which I denoted E as, for example, the environment. Therefore, we can define heritability as the ratio of the variance of G over the variance of Y, which is simply the proportion of the trait variance explained uh, by genetic factors. So uh, although this is a very nice definition in the sense that it is, uh, it is neat, uh, it's um, self-contained, it's not very useful in a way because uh, unless we can observe G, and this is some of the, the, the things we'll do uh, in the next part of this lecture. But uh, I, won't, I won't leave you dry. I would like to, to approach heritability through a slightly different angle, so which is that of the phenotypic correlation between relatives. So for example, we can ask um, how much uh, is height of siblings uh, correlated? So if we were uh, observing a bunch of siblings in the population, we can quantify that number. And, and that number will tell us something about uh, um, the heritability because in essence, uh, the resemblance between um, um, siblings is partially uh, uh, driven by genetic factors as we can, we can all uh, imagine. Uh, and we can do the same thing uh, with a different type of relatives. For example, we can look at uh, the relatedness between the resemblance, sorry, between um, um, sibling, oh, sorry, child, children here, and parents. So this is a data, data from the UK Biobank, uh, just that are represented for uh, for this lecture. And so what is we're looking at is is height of the of um, uh, about a thousand offspring as a function of the average height of their parents. And so we also see that there is a, a nice, nice correlation there and which, which should speak to the, the, the parameter that we want to, to, to quantify. So this is not a definition per se, but uh, the quantitative genetics theory uh, gives us a framework that relates uh, the phenotypic correlation uh, between relatives uh, with heritability through that equation here, and also introduce this parameters R I R I J. And what is this parameter R I J? It's the coefficient of genetic relationship. So we will spend a bit more time on that coefficient uh, in the next part of the lecture. But in a way, uh, this equation gives us another way of defining heritability, which is uh, the degree to which uh, the phenotypic correlation between siblings, uh, between relatives, sorry, in general, uh, to which extent that phenotypic correlation between siblings scales linearly as a function of uh, a coefficient of genetic relationship. So just briefly, this coefficient, coefficient of genetic relationship, um, or simply coefficient of relationship, is a, is a parameter that tells us about uh, how much DNA is shared between relatives, and, and that can be actually quantified uh, irrespective of the trait. So in a way, we can use that equation as a way to define heritability, and which, which is a bit more useful because we can observe both uh, that correlation and, and that RIJ. And so we'll spend a bit more time on the second part of this lecture on this, as that will provide us keys to estimate heritability. So just to, uh, to come back and try to put that together, this, uh, the, our definition of heritability, we have the heritability, again, which quantifies the degrees uh, to which inter-individual differences and resemblance in the population are due to genetic factors. 
And that can be approached through a more standard definition that looks at you know, the proportion of phenotypic variance explained by genetic factors, but also can be approached through the resemblance between relatives, in particular using this fundamental theorem in quantitative genetics uh, that links the phenotypic correlation between relatives and heritability through uh, the introduction of the, this coefficient Rij of uh, genetic relatedness. So a, a few more things about heritability, uh, I think are, that are important to, to know is that first of all, it, heritability is not a universal constant. Uh, so heritability is a property of a trait, meaning that different traits will have different heritabilities. It's a property of a trait in a population, meaning that for the same trait as the population uh, varies, so we can look at uh, different parts, you know, ge geographical uh, um, uh, regions of the world and look at uh, heritability of the same trait in those regions, we'll, we'll, it's likely that we'll see a difference in that heritability. And, and finally, the heritability also varies over time, uh, in particular as the, either as, as the genetic composition of the population is changing because of migration, for example, or as the change uh, because of the change in the, the environment or the non-genetic parts, which can also contribute to change heritability. And so I just wanted to give this example from this Rimfeld et al. study published in Nature Human Behavior in 2018. And that, that paper was looking at uh, the heritability of educational attainment uh, in Estonia before and after uh, the Cold War. And so uh, check, check this up, uh, and it's an it's interesting uh, paper. And uh, one last thing I'd like to say, uh, just that the value of the, her the heritability uh, has no, uh, um, in a way, it it's having a large, if you compare different populations, having a large heritability is not necessarily better in any way. I think it just, uh, you know, just want to think about it as a, as a population parameter, uh, which we want to quantify, and, and hopefully that can teach us a few, a few things. So what are the things that, um, the heritability can teach us, uh, I will address that in the next slide, but before we move on, uh, I'd just like to introduce this uh, concept of genetic correlation. So uh, the genetic correlation is a, is, a, is a key and a quite important concept as well. Uh, so the genetic correlation is now looking at two traits. So heritability, we're looking at one trait, whereas the genetic correlation is looking at two traits. And so what we're asking is, uh, to which extent uh, those two traits are underlain by uh, similar genetic factors that are you know, causing or creating those two traits that we observe. And so the genetic correlation, uh, RG, which is the standard notation for it, um, between two traits can be defined in a somewhat similar way as the heritability. So we can approach it, approach it sorry, using a population-based definition. So if we go back to our model Y equals G plus E, uh, so we can do that for trait one and trait two, and therefore conclude that you know, the genetic correlation, at least the defined genetic correlation, as the correlation of G1 and G2. Uh, but we can also use uh, our uh, sort of covariance between relatives ang angle and use a more extended version of uh, this uh, theorem that I showed in the previous slides, and which also relates the correlation between relatives now for two traits. So we're taking a relative I uh, for trait one and relative J for trait two. So we're looking at the correlation of those two traits in two different set of people. And that can also be a func expressed as a function of the coefficient of relatedness. And we have here a scalar that is a function of genetic correlation and heritability. So, uh, which is also very handy uh, when it comes to trying to estimate those, uh, those quantities. So, um, so far I introduced the heritability of a, a continuous traits. So it was the heritability, you know, Y equals G, I talked about variance and implicitly uh, I, was, I was referring to uh, quantitative traits. So, but uh, heritability can be also extended. We can talk about the heritability of binary trait in particular of the disease. And you've probably heard about it uh, in the literature and seen papers uh, mentioning that. So um, uh, a nice uh, way we can define the heritability of binary trait is to actually conceptualize that binary trait as an extreme form of a certain continuous liability. And so this is referred to as a liability threshold model and which I'll try to illustrate here on the right hand side of the slide. So essentially this is the, the liability and we can say that well the binary trait that we observe is actually just a, a, um, 
uh, dichotomization of that trait, as in people with the, the value one, for example, if it's coded as zero one, people with the value one are the people above that, uh, that, that threshold. So uh, a number of diseases are actually defined this way. So uh, obesity, uh, to, this, to the point that we think about it as a disease, uh, you know, it can be debatable, uh, but obesity is, uh, is defined exactly this way as uh, having a, this body mass index larger than a given threshold, which is 30 kilogram per uh, meter square. And uh, type two diabetes is defined or at least diagnosed. Uh, it, uh, there are other uh, criteria to diagnose. Uh, uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, but it's classically diagnosed as uh, having a fasting uh, plasma glucose larger than 7 millimole per liter. And so in those cases, those, you know, uh, the disease is, is, is again seen as an extreme form of that liability, but uh, those two examples are actually very nice because they, they show they showcase examples where the liability can be observed, BMI and fasting glucose can be observed. Uh, in many cases, the, the underlying liability may not be observed, but we can still conceptually uh, think about uh, a disease or binary trait uh, this way. And therefore the heritability in that case, uh, as well as the genetic correlation, when you think about if we were to compare two diseases, for example, uh, can be conceptualized, it, at least it's well-defined as the heritability on this continuous liability. And so uh, you can have a look at this uh, Faulkner paper from 1965, which uh, expands more on that. So uh, through, in this lecture, the, I, I, could, I could technically give um, an entire lecture on the estimation of heritability of diseases, um, but I just wanted to have to slot in this slide to say what we're learning here is is, uh, is can be gen generalized to address other questions, in particular to study diseases, but this is this goes a bit further beyond uh, the point, um, the scope of this lecture. So now we're going back to why uh, heritability, uh, uh, how that concept can be used in practice. So the, the heritability, uh, knowing heritability is, is important because it gives us uh, an upper bound of the accuracy of genetic predictors for a given trait. So if you know eventually you want to predict a trait from genetic information, knowing the heritability tells you in, in the best, best world uh, how much you can, you can achieve. And so it's, there is a path to building a such a predictor, but at least it gives you uh, uh, this, this upper bound uh, in, in, in theory. So it's useful for that. Um, the heritability also relates to to the, the, the response to, to selection and natural selection. So this is classically thought in the concept of agriculture uh, when, uh, for example, uh, breeders design breeding programs for uh, you no know, cattle. Uh, the knowing the heritability of the trait tells them uh, how much, uh, um, well, the efficiency about, of that, that's that breeding program and how efficient that breeding program will be uh, as, a, as a function of heritability. Uh, but it also um, uh, relates to natural selection because if there is natural selection in a population, uh, heritability can also be used as a parameter to predict the response to natural selection. So it, it is it is useful on this res in this respect as well. Uh, a third application uh, uh, could be uh, so I kind of slowed in that question earlier, but uh, it could be actually about informing or predicting the and an individual risk to develop a certain disease, knowing that they have um, affected uh, relatives. So. Uh, that's that's I think it's important uh, it's important um, a question for public health and and heritability can can uh, answer that question as well and uh, so in this in this um, uh, workshop you will be taught about genome association studies uh, a lot uh, and uh, heritability has a direct uh, connection with that because heritability influences the statistical power of, you know, of genome association studies or GWASs in the sense that uh, if you have a large heritability, um, well, it, you have more power, but more precisely, knowing the heritability allows you to, under a number of assumptions, of course, uh, but allows you to, to design uh, a better uh, um, GWAS and predict, uh, for example, uh, what sample size you, you, can, you, can, you can have to put together, you have to put together for detecting a certain signal. Right, so uh, that that takes us to the, the, the end of this first part. Um, I hope you 
you have uh, you had a, um, an overview and probably a bit more than just an overview of what heritability is and some of the caveats and how that relates to the concept of trinity correlation. Uh, and in the next part of this lecture, we will talk about this RIJ that I introduced, this you know, trinity relationship. So I will define it a bit more precisely and tell you how we can calculate it uh, empirically. So uh, which will give us uh, um, ways to go to estimate heritability and trinity correlation. Uh, which will be addressed in the, the following part again. So thank you very much for your attention and um, I hope to see you for the second part.